This is my song, this is my jam It's the Mead Wings of yeah This is my song, this is my jam Hey, what's happening? It's your host, Tinto. And before we get started on this early midweek drop, I would like to tell you about an exciting event. On the 23rd of March, 2024, Roots to Fruits is hosting an Empower Her Leadership event in central London. And this is not just an event, but a movement that will allow you to connect with trailblazers, share insights and explore resources to transform your finance career. To get your ticket and secure your spot, head over to www.rootstofruits.com forward slash events. See you there. If you want to make the most of the time you're about to spend listening to this midweek drop, listen to episode 160 first. It's titled Father Abraham. That will give you all the context you need to enjoy what we are discussing on this week's episode of the midweek drop. If you haven't listened to episode 160, good luck. But forewarned is for exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Feeling Station. And this really should be the midweek drop. But <laughs> I have to drop it as an episode because, Nino, how long have I been trying to get this? Well, how long have I failed to get you together? <laughs> I have been waiting, my brother. <laughs> it's been at least, what, almost three months? At least. You know, this start began in 2023, but the way life has been moving, right? It's been, yeah, difficult. But here we are. And here is the early midweek drop to set the tone for your guys' week. And we also did an incredible thing. A hundred percent. We listened to feedback, right? Okay, I know the girl said your voice was sexy, but bro, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what what, what well, am listen, I listening to now? <laughs> listen, listen, listen. To all the listeners out there, we have a female among, amongst us. Oh, yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so you know we listened to a, a lot of the feedback that you guys had after we did a review of um an episode that spoke about parenthood and we shared how incredible it's been for us being fathers but a lot of people also said look it would be nice to have a female in the house a female perspective it was about time yes guys. so it was ladies about and time. gentlemen please put your hands together for the first female host of the feeling station <laughs> I'm here, I'm here to represent all the females. I hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are you, madam? Oh, so my name is Marlo. Do you get that? Yeah? Marlo. Marlo. What, yeah. What is it with you guys and all these really saucy names? Ah, you know Brown to. and then you go Marlo. Yeah, This is what to. happens when you give people choices, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what name do you want? Well. <laughs> Well, that sounds cool. So, <laughs> so Marlo, how, how did that come about? What does that even mean? Do you know what it means, right? No, so I'll is. tell you a crazy story. Mm. Marlo, which is like Marlo, right? I was mm. like, but what is Marlo? So mm. I went online, I put in the meaning, and Marlo literally means like a drift of wood. I'm sorry to disappoint you all. There is, like, there is really like a huge Yo. meaning to it. But it's some English thing about, you know, like, you know, like when maybe like the lake is drained or the pool, when you drain the pool. Yeah, yeah. You know the wood that's left? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm there. Is. That's the model. I'm Yo. there. <laughs> you Yo. can't get rid of me like that. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. Well, Gina, we're welcome. Honestly, we are, we're really, really, awesome. really glad to have you here. And, you know, the yeah. balance that we, we really wanted to come off this podcast, it feels like it's going to happen now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you're listening to this podcast for the first time, it's a uh, friendship, family, and family. Hey, hey, man. See what happens when you get a. Do you need us to see, help see you what now? happens when you get a female in the house? Is this, yeah, I just confused you. Know, yeah, yeah. You, this is what's needed. Man, <laughs> what's man lost me. his words. There was a lady amongst us. Yeah, Marlo is here. The Marlo effect. Man, the Marlo effect right now. Anyway, for those who are listening to this podcast for the first time, it's a romantic family and friendship breakup podcast focusing on stories that people would like to talk about, with a view to give you lessons from their experiences. And the podcast is really popular because we do our best to keep people anonymous. But in this instance, we're not going to give names because we are speaking as the team that does the midweek drop. However, just to bring you up to speed, if you've not listened to episode 160 titled Father Abraham, strongly encourage you to go back to that episode because that's what we're talking about today. A lot of issues came out of that. And we've been trying 
not to get in too deep mm. but every every 20 seconds we were listening to it we were pausing because we were like yeah. what what yeah. what so it was crazy just in case that was your reaction to this is the perfect opportunity for you to hear how we engaged with this episode and uh, we hear each other's views and hopefully they're going to be balanced <laughs> um if you listen to the podcast and you want to support it um and we've been doing really good at the coffees please head over to www dot buy me a coffee dot com forward slash feeling station and give as your spirit leads remember there's nothing too small to support the podcast you've grown to love and because the team is growing let's make this more interesting right um uh, because i know man and me are going to be saying to me hey where's my money we need right? to be getting paid <laughs> my guy <laughs> like they were like we come here for free man like, where my money at <laughs> So if you're giving money for the midweek drop, if you're adding a comment, please add midweek drop to it and then add your comment. Then that way we know how to split the tips in it. I think in music they call these, what do they call it? What, what sheets? Spread, uh, spread, I don't know. Split sheets, split sheets. So that you get. Yeah, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I'm like, what? I was waiting to hear what, what are we was spreading? Say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so straight into it then. Father Abraham, wild oh, episode. My wild, goodness. wild, wild. It, it made me feel all sorts of things. Um, oh, wow. Malo, if you were to describe how that episode made you feel, what would you say? Do you know what? It was like a roller coaster. Mm. You know, I, you know, like you feel, you kind of feel pain for somebody. Yeah. Then you go, I mean, she's going to leave, right? She's going to leave. And then you hear something else. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Girl, why? <Yeah. laughs> so it was like, it's just a lot. There's a lot to unpack. A lot that happened. A lot that I'll tell you as a female, I get where she was, she was coming from. Yeah. So I think this is the other side where I was like, I see why she made some of the decisions. And sometimes I'm like, why? <laughs> Help me out. Right at the beginning, the first thing she said was, this man was separated. It's, so something tells me it had to do with the fact that this man had a ring on his finger. That was attractive. Yes. And he was in church. Yes. And I've been told this, that the biggest attraction to any man is that piece of metal on his finger. Do you know what? When I get married, I'll be like to my men, don't wear a ring. <laughs> 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 you might just sell yourself a little bit, a, a, whole, a whole heap of wahala. You know? So it's it, it really is something that I've come across um, personally mm. and through some friends. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That ring on somebody's finger, whether it's on a woman's finger or on a man's finger, for some reason is a source of attraction. For men, it's the idea that would I be able to conquer somebody who actually says husband to someone else? That is true. I mean,. <laughs> People say a man is more attractive if he's in a relationship. Mm. For some reason, I don't know, if, you know, why that <laughs> happens. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a relationship, suddenly all these women want you, right? It's, it's crazy. True. It's true. It's, crazy. it's the same as women, either in your relationship or when a woman is pregnant, men are still asking her out. Yeah. I don't know if it's the, it's the whole thing of stolen waters. Hey. Being an exciting thing, it's like stolen waters. Are sweet, are wow, sweet. I, like, I, like, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get caught, and maybe that's what happened in this case. Because, right, mm. just to kick it off, you know, she she says this dude was separated from 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 his missus, and that's always been a bit a bit, a bit of a gray area. And I hope you guys can help me with this separation. Hmm. What is your understanding of separation? For me, separation is, um, we're still thinking about it. Separation means there's a possibility of us getting back together. Separation is we have things that we have not resolved fully to divorce. So whatever it is, is you're separated, but we're, st we're still together. Legally, we're together. So whether you're in the same house or not together, as long as you're saying the word separation to me, in my head, you're saying there is a chance. If you say to me, we're divorcing, I kind of, I think that's different. I don't know. Maybe that's the way I look at it. For me, separation mm. just means, hey, because separation is like, we're taking a break. Mm. We know we just thought if we, if we leave, uh, uh, just have a year away from each other, we'll see whether can we live without each other. And there's always like these weird things with separation. I know sometimes separation can be, people are struggling to sell the house or whatever. But half the times for me, separation just means they are not available for you. That's it for me. I like how you said that. Are you hinting that they're available for someone else then? No, but they're with, they're still with that. They're, they're still locked up in that situation. Because you said I'm not available for you. Yeah, for me. So if a guy, for if a who? guy, yeah, if a guy came to me and he says, "Oh, I'm on separation," he's not. It's not for. He's not available for me. It's just that he's not. He's not there yet. And yet, 
he's telling you that to say that he is available. But he's not. Because if I say yeah, to him, no. go, go, tell, go tell your ex that we're together, what is he going to say? Of course he's not going to do that. Of course. So therefore, he ain't available. So how do we know that someone is actually genuinely separated, exactly. someone is genuinely divorced? I, I think it's a stage in a marriage that should not exist. Because what is it that you're actually trying to establish by separating? Yeah. All I see separation is is an opportunity for somebody to give you a proposal that you're going to be interested in that's better than your current proposal. So one of my friends um, has been married for about 12 years now. Um, them as a couple, they now sleep in separate rooms. The initial excuse was because you snore too much. Mm. But you only started snoring too much after nine years, which for me already does not add up. Um, so I was asking them, so are you separated? And then they're like, yes, we are separated. I'm like, so have you had the conversation to say you're separated? And there's like, no, we haven't had the conversation. I'm like, so what do you mean you're separated? And then they say, well, I'm no longer emotionally available, which is what you are alluding to, Marlo, mm. to say that somebody in that space is no longer available in a, in a way. So what I don't get, uh, Nino, if you can help me with this, if, if somebody decides I'm going to take some time out to try and establish whether I'm really in this or not, do you think that that amounts to anything meaningful? Oh, that's a risky behavior that opens up doors for other things to happen. That is very, very risky. Very, very risky. Because it does open up the door for a third party to come in. Mm. And sometimes people suggest separation because there is already a third party in the picture. So it is very, very risky. I think, you know, if you're married and there's issues in your marriage, mm. There is either a resolution and reconciliation, or you decide actually, let's just call it it's quits. Not it's it's irreconcilable. Exactly. There's yeah. no way of, mm. you know, rebuilding that mm. relationship. Mm. But Good. sometimes it's fear of the unknown, isn't it? You want to have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. So you stay married, and then you have your little fun on the side too. Which is what separation allows you to do. Which is what separation. <laughs> I love you see what I mean? So uh, as far and, as I'm uh, I, I think I think separation is is something that really should not be there. They talk they talk about pre pre marriage counseling. Yeah. Right? Which is mediation between husband and wife. Just yeah. for you to make sure that hey, this thing that you want to get into is what you're really interested in doing. If you decide you want to go ahead, yeah. They still remind you that when you, when it gets hot in the kitchen, you guys can come for mediation. Mm. And and that halfway house I think is what separation really should be. Mm. You know, that engagement between husband and wife, hey, we're having a difficult spot here, it's hot in the kitchen. Then someone gives you that perspective from the outside. Mm. And then if that isn't working, I think that's at the point that you should say, call it quits. Yeah, because I think culturally, um, where I grew up, separation wasn't separation like it is these days. Mm. If, whenever there was a problem in the marriage, you'd call your aunties, your uncles, they sit down and then you work through it. Whether if you end up going your ways, but there's been family involvement mediation, yeah. to mediation to sit down and chat. Mm. Now we have the ability to uh, go to a counselor where it's private. We don't want your family knowing. The two of you can go somewhere privately and chat. The moment you say separation to me, <laughs> it's over. Ah, it's a doorway. Exactly. <laughs> One of you is gone. <laughs> exactly. One of you is gone. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> In the absence of marriage, do you know what that really sounds like to me? Mm. I'm taking a break. Yeah, and what break are you taking when mm. you're married? So, so yeah, exactly. What what, what break are you taking? If, and then yeah. in this instance, mm. um, is his guy is saying separating from someone he's got children with. What break are you taking from your wife and your children and you want to what, just live in another different house? Yeah. Who's going to look? For me, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's either you're in or you're out. Mm. Uh, I know it's not that simple, but I think that separation thing is what we're playing with, where if you're not actively going for counseling or seeking help yeah. and you're just living your lives, I just it's call it quits. It's permission to find the, the, the opportunity to, 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 to test have the some, water. Yeah, to test the water. Mm. And if something catches nicely, then you can confidently say, hey, fam, I'm out. I want the divorce thing. But I, you know, when you look at this particular you know, episode, Father Abraham. Obviously, you know, he had his wife, he had his kids, 
Um, things didn't work out. We don't know exactly to what extent things didn't work out. And then he meets this new woman. Um, so he's separated, right? Well, that's what he says. So he's not with his wife. <laughs> Because she mm. says a comment at the end where she says, She may have taken part in him in, divorcing. Exactly. So my question for that, I mean, she's not here for us to no, ask we, again. We, we, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but my thing was, oh, so, so what was maybe, your part? yeah, so what was your part? Because maybe they were still living in the same house. Mm -hmm. So were they really separated or were they just going through a difficult patch, patch in their in lives? Their marriage. Yeah. Mm. And I was an encourager to say, hey, you know, could be green this side. <laughs> That's exactly what you said, Nino, to say that you're, you're testing the waters. Yeah, testing the waters. And the waters, they were what? Were They're nice. nice. Like the Indian Ocean. <laughs> and you know, that, you know, at the beginning, you know, when you first meet somebody mm. and you're going out and, mm. you know, you're catching some feels, a little kiss here and there. It's fire. It's fire. It's fire. Mm. It's fire. She rubs, she puts her hands all, all over your head like Ooh. this. And then that one that you're separated from is no longer. <laughs> the hands don't feel the same anymore. <laughs> And these ones are feeling nice. <laughs> skin to skin. Skin to skin. <laughs> it, um, it, it, it also then makes me, make, makes me think about the point at which it's okay. Okay, let's say you've separated, right? And you've decided, because some people say we've been separated five years. Yeah. Yeah. At what point is it now okay for you to start entertaining someone? And Nino, I think you, we, we spoke about something earlier on. I'd like you to play it back. So, mm. I had a friend who went on a date. And actually, both of the people, the man and the girl, I knew both of them. They go on a date. Mm. And the date goes really well. But then at the end of the evening... The woman starts talking about marriage. This is on the first date. Mm. <laughs> Now, I was like, that would scare any man away. I mean, how are you going to start talking about marriage <laughs> on the first date, blood? I, I, I wouldn't be scared by that. Seriously? No. On the first date? On the first date, I'm, I'm not going to be scared by that because... Go on then. I think... Uh, given a certain age that you become as a man, it ceases to matter how soon somebody pops the question about marriage because if you're already going out on dates, you've predetermined what you're looking for. Yeah? So if I was to go on the same date and the girl is talking to me about roses are red, violets are blue, Tinto, you're sweet, and so <laughs> are you, or whatever, you know, all of that stuff, right? I'm already like, okay, cool, that's cute, but where's this thing going? Because if I want to have three, four other children and I don't have a woman and I want to put a ring on it, I'm not really interested in the roses are red and the violets are blue. My conversation is going to be more, hey, so where do you see this going? Because no, remember, no, hey. let's, let's assume I'm 50 years old. Yep. I don't have six months to be trying to establish where you're going. And then at the end of six months, you know, treat me, I'm not looking for marriage. Then I'm yeah, pressing no, no, the no, reset listen, button listen. Hold again. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think if you are on a date and you are vibing with someone and you feel that connection with someone, to me, that is grounds to go on a second date. That's not grounds to now start talking about so do, marriage. Do you say, are you saying on this first date, are you saying, hey, we went on a date together and guess what, Nino Brown, just on this first date, I want to marry you or my desire is to be married. No, this, is, two, this was a conversation. Those are two different things. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. This was mm. not a conversation around, do you want to get married? As in, you know, do you want to stay single? Do you want to get married? This was a conversation as in, do you want us to get married? Hey. Yeah, That's I understand. <laughs> I don't know. I hear, I hear what you're saying, Tinto. I, I, I but think, it, I, yeah, go on, go on. I hear what you're saying where, where I think, for me, clarity is such a big deal. Number one, right? On the first date, as much as I tell you why, maybe it's my pride. As much as I will be like, I want to marry this guy. I think my pride will be like, nah, fam, we need to wait a bit because we don't know what he's about because it's first date. So I could say my desire is to be married. Like, I don't want to play games with you. Um, I'm doing this. Eventually I want to get married. I want to have a family. This is what I'm about. If that's not for you, be clear. So you, you tell me. I'm not sure on the first date I'll ever admit to a guy that I want to marry you. Because I tell you, 
I've gone, I've had dates, which are great. But the third dates were terrible. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> so I don't know what Tinto where you're at. Like, like imagine she was like, Tinto, you, you're the man. I want to marry you. Wouldn't that scare you? Like, if if they're in there. If I'm thinking marriage, and and okay, let's 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 just talk about the reason why you'd have gone for a date in the first place. Why are you going for a date? You've enjoyed chatting to that person. Why did you look for them in the first place? Because you're single. You want... Wait, it depends. Do you see what I mean? It depends. It, it, it depends? On maybe I'm going on a date for a friends with benefits or I'm going on yeah. a date to be married. You see, so or, if you're going on that date for friends yeah. with benefits, then she says, Oi, when am I getting married to you? My nigga, I'm out. <laughs> right? Because the benefits I'm after, you know, the, the, the benefits I'm after are, are not likely going to happen because this is not what I'm after. I guess the point I'm getting at is you have to be clear what you want from day one. If I've determined within myself, I am now looking for a wife. And then let's just say for argument's sake, I've gone on a dating website. The purpose for me is to find somebody who could be a wife. And I'm going to have certain criteria that I'm after, right? I was remember the, we're looking at Fifty Cent's video this afternoon, <laughs> right? Fifty Cent's video, right? He's right? crazy. The guy says he can look at hot <laughs> women all day long, but they, they, but they need to stay over there, away from me. Because he says, because probably stay over crazy there. AF, stay over there, right? He's clear. He knows what he wants, right? So I'd be approaching this woman, knowing exactly what I want from the profile. I want a black girl, I want a white girl, I want a Japanese girl, Chinese girl. I want her to be five foot tall. If all of these boxes are ticked, and then you say we vibe on the first date. My guy, if she says, I want to marry I'm like, oi, what's your family saying? <laughs> You're in. Oh, that it turns out to be all sorts of crazy, brethren. I mean, and then on top of that, I have a friend who got married um, after, what, uh, a month, a month worth of dating. And then in the second, uh, Rora was done, the third day of the wedding. Yeah, I like that though. That, they, they that I like that. I like that. Today. Yeah. The absence of clarity, I think, is what will make you move mad. No, yeah. no, no. I, I agree with you 100%. 100%. I think you, you do need to be clear. But I think also you need to allow yourselves to get to know each other. That has to be that growth. That's, the, that's the my only personal thing, The only thing with getting to know each other is at what point is it enough to exactly. get to know each other? See, this is where, also where, do you, do you, I'm, do you I'm know? on the other side now where I'm like, Bruh, someone will get to know you now listen, Marla, for five years no, and they're Marla, still getting to know you. My, my, my test of whether things will work or not is if you actually live together. Because yeah. let's, let's say you've been dating. You've been yeah. dating for a little while. Yeah? Yeah, 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 You've been dating for a little while. Uh-huh. And then you live together. Because when you live together and you're around each other all the time, that's when you get to know the real character of an individual. Yeah, Ooh. but do you know what? I, I hear you. I, do, I don't know what that's, that's, if it's as fine line as that. I think there's, it can go either way. You can have people that, like, for example, you just said your friends got married within yeah. three months. Mm. They're happy. Mm. I've got friends, same case. The guy, uh, we, we, uh, I know the couple, three weeks in, he proposed. They got three months, they were married, and they've been together, got kids, they're happy. And then, um, and they're still together. This is maybe 25 years later. Wow. And then you've got people that live together in the same house for years, right? For years. And some of them are happy. They don't want to get married, right? It's in the same breath, some live together for years and then they don't get married. So I think it's just some do get married in three months and break, break up. I know somebody that just happened recently where I was like end of last year and then I just heard, oh, it's done. I'm like done already. Like how? Yo. So I just think you never know because it's two individuals. People are just, human beings are just different, isn't it? The way I act from Sarah or someone else is going to be completely different to how, you know, I could make it work with my person. But then Sarah might struggle. So I get you, but I think it's like humans are never. I remember thinking once upon a time that you must live with someone for you to get a feel of whether this is going to work or it won't work. But I've got a different view now. I think remain separate and then trust God, trust the process, trust each other to be the best versions of yourself. Because it's, it's just the same with... That's interesting. It's just the same with sex. The more sex you have, the more you think there are options and the less satisfied you are with the current. 
because you're hoping the next is always better and the next is better and the next is better. Reduce the number of sexual partners, increase what you have, maximize what you have, enjoy what you have, don't look outside. That is that is a very mature mm. outlook. That's very very mature. And that's how I view now living with someone. Mm. The prospect and the opportunity of doing that and keeping doing that doing that you keep picking oh, uh, Malo you had this thing about them. I don't like that about them. So, no, so now let me try this with Stacy. Why do you leave your shoes there? Yeah, why do you leave your <laughs> shoes? Oh, Stacy does this. No, that's not my kind of thing. My nigga, go into the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign the contract. Let's <laughs> Just sign on the dotted line. We're together now. I do you, do, do you still do feel it. that people should live together? Do you know what? Before, I, before you decide I'm marrying... I, I I don't know. I, I I suppose we're all kind of, you know, basing our opinions on our perspectives or, or, or our perspective on our on our personal experiences. Mm. Um, but I find that you know, if if you are in the same space as with someone for a period of time, you get to know that individual. You get to know their likes, their dislikes. Mm. You get to know you know their habits. Um, you get to know everything about an individual. Well, I, I don't know about everything because you you know you might be with someone for thirty years and then find out. They've had a whole separate life, but you get to know a lot, you know, by living with someone, being yeah. in the same space as someone. Yeah. That's my own personal opinion. Being in the same space, um, because you've you've chosen to do that is fantastic, the two of you. But one thing that came up very early in the episode, I think if it's easily within the first two minutes, was the statement that my friends around me were getting married. This person's getting married. That mm. person's getting married. This person's mm. getting married. That's the pressure. Yeah. Mm. And then suddenly, the fact that this dude was separated, right? But still living in the same house, even though they'd come in different cars, became clouded by the pressure that she said she felt around her. Mm. Um, Nino, I can't ask you this question because we're men. So, Marlo, mm. I'm going to ask you this question, not specific to you, but just in general. Mm. How real is this pressure of friends? getting married and someone's personal experience is that they're not married. Is it a real thing or this is just something that we just hear in the streets? I think um, uh, I'm going to say 80% because there's 20% of the women that don't feel this way. I think, mm. I think they're women that um, have said, Oh, they're not, they don't, they're not, they want to, they don't want to get married. Um, if I look at my friendships, I've got one or two females who just don't want to get married. They're happy. They want to travel. They don't want kids. They're happy. And that's fine. Um, mm. But majority, just look at my life, majority of people around me and myself, I remember being a kid. And as a kid, I was watching your damsel distress. You're watching your Cinderella's. You're watching your Snow White. A guy comes in, saves the day. That's engraved in your head. That at some point, a guy's going to come, he's going to save your day. You're going to get married going to have this beautiful life in your role as a woman. So little things like that shape you as a young girl. So by the time you are now at a certain age, everybody's also talking about at a certain age, you should be married. You know, at a certain age, about 25 years, 25, 26, most, most people are getting married. Mm. You know, mm. 28, they're having your first child. And then you've got this girl who's 35. She's not married, no child. And it's like, and everybody's going, what is happening? Mm. And all your friends around you are either married, they've got kids, or they've got something happening. So there is, I think there's this pressure that is there in terms of getting married. It can come from your family, your friends, from random people. Like half the times you find you go somewhere and someone says, um, hi, how's your life? They'll check, check, they'll check on your job, what you do for work, isn't it? Mm. And then as a female, they ask you, are you married? That's like that a thing. That is so true. Yeah. So once I ask you about your job, maybe for men it's about your job, what do you do for a living? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for females, are you married? Even if you're applying for a job. Yeah. What's your marital status? What's your marital status is a, is a thing. So you get asked that a lot. So you find that even while you're trying to be happy as a single person, you also do have a desire to get married, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but then now there's this pressure, which makes you feel like I'm not enough if I do not have a, my significant other. If this guy is not coming out, he's not openly telling the world that he's with me. It's, I think it's a sense of belonging for women that is just there. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. 
Yeah. I think what's wrong is maybe the means and how we go about it and the feelings that it comes with that, the rejection that you feel when you're not married and the things when you don't have a child at a certain age. So that that is real. That is out there. So I get why some of the decisions she was making. Mm. She made those decisions because if all your friends are married on a weekend, you can't be saying, yo, what are you doing this weekend? You know what they're doing. They're home with their kids and their husband. And then the other things, every, every girl is going, oh, me and my husband the other day, we... Eish. Yeah. That's rough, bro. Eish. Eish. <laughs> you, what do you say? Eish. Me and Eish. my yeah. husband. Me, <laughs> myself, and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold out of here. And then you know the streets are cold. Mm. <laughs> and then yeah. every guy you're meeting is going, hey, Sha, I just want benefits. So you, you just then get a guy, just one guy saying to you, I want to get married. It doesn't matter whether it means it or it doesn't mean it. Because remember, everyone is going benefits, 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 benefits. Or they're already married. And then you get some guy who says, I know, I love you. I'll go and pay. So you have all this pressure on you. Your, all, all your friends are married. They're having kids. They're all settled. They've got their houses. Um, you then feel that pressure to get in that situation. So you meet someone, um, things are going well at the beginning, and then you start to see all these red flags. Does that pressure dictate that you stay in that situation or do you take heed of those red flags and get out of that situation? I actually like how you've asked that. Mm. Because that ties in directly. This is so intricately woven and woven, woven, woven. Shit. Data bundles. Woven, 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 woven. Around that area. Have you, have, you, have, you heard about native tongue, have you heard about native tongue influence? Yeah. This is exactly what in. has happened here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that, that W word, this is mm. all W word into the episode because... I think she knew she needed to not even get involved in the first place. But once she was in, she says, in fact, one of her lessons was do not die for Abantu Bazutin. Yeah. You know, what will people say? That's what that, that's what yeah. that basically means. Van Vachatichi. And I got very close members who suffer from that disease mm. very badly. You could feel like you need to do a who in a room, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you're scared if you go toilet and just stink up the joint. What are people going to say? Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right? Those guys will die with incredibly painful cramps and go home and do it there. Just because they're scared of Abantu Bazotin. What are mm. people going to say on Ajatiji? And this... Uh, lady bless her soul was gripped with that from day one mm, mm. have you ever done stuff because a hundred a hundred mean i i was the queen of what people say syndrome a hundred i this is what i'm saying i think it's how we've been brought up mm. and it's a, a thing of um again every family is different mm. but for me it's it, it was, um, there was a lot of expectation, I think, from church, number one. A lot of expectation around family. And yeah. um, it was, I was going to be technically the first female to either get married, the first, because I was the oldest female. So therefore, there was this expectation. Mm. So the, what would people say syndrome killed me. It, it killed me so many times. I would date a guy and then my dad would pass one comment about what he doesn't like about the guy. It wouldn't take me two minutes. I'll call the guy and say, my dad doesn't like you, bye. Aish. Damn. That was it. Because my dad said, my mom said, and uh, thinking about whether it was work or professional life or the stuff I used to enjoy doing, what will people say? If stuff I used to enjoy, I want to wear. If I want to dress up in a certain way, I find some nice cut skirt and I'm, I'm happy, I'm cool. And then all I think about is, hey, people in church. Wow. You know, I couldn't go into a movie house. Why? Because why would people say seeing a Christian girl going to a movie house? Ah. Pastor's kid going to a movie to house. To the cinema? Yeah. Ah. So I, I, I had the white people. It's for me. It was what? a lot of things. Ah, you I couldn't drink. I couldn't. No, I couldn't drink. My, my, my friends were trying out drinking. My friends were going to a club. 
I couldn't go to a nightclub. Okay, but what was wrong with trying? I mean, we going to a cinema. Because it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't a holy bella. It was like um, the cinema was like um, like a dangerous place. This is where How? the devil works. I know. I know. It was the dark. I mean, I mean, listen, it, it listen, worked I, there though. I know. I know. I know. I know, I know certain cinemas <laughs> where movies were not watched. You said. You said, you said at the back. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't go to that cinema to watch a movie. I can tell you that much. I, I don't want to play dumb or take away from what you're saying, but I grew up in the bush, literally, right? Mm. Just about had a TV. So talking about cinema would have been a big thing. So I'm really mm. not playing dumb, but, but what would just happen in the cinema house that was... Dude. Huh? The cinema is the only place you can kiss your girl nicely. You're talking about just kissing. <laughs> I mean, you could do other things. Okay, I wasn't. Okay, I wasn't that level. I mean, kissing to me was already what a big deal. What level you? I was, I was, I was on kissing <laughs> level. <laughs> you you, you, you couldn't. I mean, I mean no, 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 levels are higher. Yo, yo, yo. I was on just kissing, holding hands level in, in the cinema. In the cinema. So there was a good reason not to go there if people were, were saying it. Was yeah, of bad course. Like Initial, but you know what? You got your boyfriend, didn't it? And then you want to go and chill. Because I had to, for me, for, with me, if I had a dude, my dude had to be, we couldn't be that, we couldn't be alone. We had to group date. You had to have a chaperone. Every single time. So the cinema was the only place where we could hide. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that, Red Red? <laughs> so you, you, so you, you sit at the back. You don't sit mm. in front. Uh, no, listen. Right at the back. You have to be right at the back. Like, like back, 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 you get there, it's still dark because they they're still cleaning from the from the last movie that they've played, bro. That's when you go in. That's when you go to in. secure the spot. You secure yeah. your spot because everyone was because, going to the back. And remember, you're not you're not going there to watch the movie, dog. So it doesn't matter that the movie hasn't started. Bro. <laughs> so you see the same thing. As long as it's dark in there, all's good. <laughs> Guys, I watch a movie. There's a movie we that played. It was called Machete. It was this machete movie, right? This guy was just machete. You know the whole machete thing? Mm. He was just slashing and killing everybody. <laughs> I can't tell you the storyline. All I remember was... <laughs> hey, it was the first time Marlo. I went to a movie house. <laughs> Marlo. Marlo's I, now releasing I, 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 re, I repented afterwards. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you repented after? Uh, I repent. My church will do those things where they catch you out of the blue. To say, yeah, you kissed a guy. So I repented afterwards. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is this is the why will people do syndrome where it forces you into dark corners and mm. you end up doing things without really thinking about you first. You're thinking about what will everyone say? And mm. this is what Chipo was going through. Mm -hmm. She's just making decisions on what will everyone else. But if she had made decisions just for herself, mm. she wouldn't have done half the things she have done. Do you reckon... I reckon she wouldn't have. I think. I, I reckon if she chose herself first, mm. she'd have said, "This, this, this nigga is not for me." Yeah. But she was on a. What will people say? And, and My the, friends. And there's peer pressure, isn't it? Peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. She would have been like, "Nah, no girl sits there and goes, I want to be played. You mm. don't want to be played." I mean, I don't know. Am I, the way you guys are looking at me like some girls uh, think no, like, no, no, we're <laughs> listening. We're listening. We're listening. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, some they want to be played. Eh? Ah, yeah, they don't mind. That's why I said women and bad boys, ah, man. They nigga. don't mind. They, they, they genuinely don't mind. Like they, they, they're okay being one of three, or they hear. Oh, that but they somebody... know about other people, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, they know, and and they're okay with it. Yeah, they're man. okay with it. Which is why, right at the beginning, I think I was saying you got to be clear what you want out of something. If you know that you're okay having more than just one, you know, it's it's your thing. But you guys are blaming. It's not fair, you know. You you had an issue with Sarah, right? And then you meet Shemaine. Shemaine is sweet. Why is Shemaine paying for Sarah's problems? Do you know what? Unfortunately, our environment plays a part in shaping our mindset. Your experiences, for you to be here right now, sitting in this podcast, you already have preconceived ideas based on your experiences, your lived experiences, mm. the environment that you grew up in. And that's another point, actually. Let me, let me just say this. I'm, I'm, I, I digress. But whenever you decide to be with someone, settle with someone, spend time with that individual's family, get to know the family, 
what are their dynamics? Because you will get an understanding of who that individual is. Yeah. Mm. If there is love in that family, you will see it. Mm. Mm. True. How are they interacting with one another? That's very, very important. Mm. So before you decide to settle down with someone, spend time with their family. That couldn't have been said better than Nino Brown. Yeah. Because it, 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 it does say a lot. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, um, but, well, but when, when I asked what the family was like and brothers were like, they were all kosher, comfortable, good people. So there was love in there. So maybe somewhere along the lines, there was a soft spot for this guy, maybe because she was seeing loving traits that she's seen before, but it was also love bombing her. Mm. Because somewhere again within that episode, this she said that he was showering me with all all manner of things, you know, gifts and et cetera, et cetera. And I've been told that one sex can cloud judgment, but gifts can equally cloud judgment. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think how you treat a woman. I, they, mm. I, I gotta tell you, um, there's some women that enjoy sex. Good sex is amazing. Mm. However, uh, there's also another side where you can treat a woman really, really well, and that's what that's great. That becomes like the. Cause she, cause you asked her and said, "Was this, was the dick that good?" And yeah. she was like, <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she was just like, "Yeah, it, no, it, it wasn't like an impressive no, no, thing." No, no, it yeah, was basic. No, no, it, nah, it was basic. And I think I asked her more than once. It, yeah, it didn't sound it to did, me like the no. issue there was 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 the dick, but she no. did mention the gifts and the desire to get more. married. Yes. So he was doing something right emotionally for her that made her go, "Oh, I'm connecting with this," and this was a thing. Um, but you know what? Talking about like family and family values, there's something that she said at the beginning. Um, she said um, she didn't think she owed the other lady loyalty. Oh, yeah. yeah she, she, she said her she hubby, so. her hubby does, did owe the other one, but she didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And that for me was, um, you know, I think I've heard the statement before, mm. but I guess for me, it was, it's more of um I know we always say if I'm if I go for a married man and he pays attention to me, it's the married man that's his fault. But I feel like I should also like be like, ah, bruh, if I'm no good here, if I know that you're in a separation or whatever, and I'm coming for you, that says something about me. It's not pinpointing and saying trying to push it down, but I feel like everyone should take responsibility. While he's responsible, you're also responsible. A hundred percent. This is why I've got a problem with this whole separation thing. Because during separation, what are the rules? <laughs> what are the rules? Do you, get, you know, what are the rules of separation? Because, <laughs> because, look, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Because if somebody's coming to me and saying, I'm separated from my missus, we even live in different homes, I've not seen her in two years, and I see, I see every other weekend because we have a child care arrangement in place. As a woman, if I was a female, that's all the permission for me to let you do whatever you want with me. Yeah. And you're talking about responsibility that you need to be accountable for what? But she says, I think I'm the one also who pushed him to get to get divorced. She said that. So this I this will. is where this is where I was like it what so this way also I was trying I was toying with a lot of things where the timeline and everything for me, I was like, so you knew they were on separation and then you decided you were still going to be in the picture. Yes, he was coming for you. Men, let's blame them. We'll, we'll blame him as well. But you also knew. And then you, then she admitted and said, I also, I think it was my fault. I also pushed him to get the divorce. I don't think I would ever crucify a man or woman who approaches a man or woman who's openly said, I'm separated and things are heading towards a divorce. Then I say, okay, so divorce them. Be, 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 because, because, yes, you can say that, but I ultimately have the choice to decide to divorce them now or not. Because if we're saying I don't have that choice, we are making the statement true that she, he stole my man, she stole my no, whatever. No, no, yeah. That I don't believe yeah. happens in the world. Nino, no I don't stolen. know what you think. No. Do no, you but think a man or woman can be stolen from someone? No, they can't. Uh, they can't, right? But also, you, this is where questions need to be asked. Like, if you're saying you're separated, mm. you should be asking, how long have you been separated? Why have you separated? What is your living arrangement? What is your arrangement with the kids? What is your financial arrangement? These are all questions that need to be asked. And if all of those check out, then if what? All, if they all check out? Yeah, if they all check out, then what? 
then you can proceed and start fucking. <laughs> you see? <laughs> hey, he didn't even talk about going on dates. Nah, no, it was cream. like, hey. nah, hit it. <laughs> All roads lead to the bedroom. <laughs> so, so Marlo, do you see what I mean when I say, I don't know if it's, if it's okay to even say that there's a measure of responsibility. I, on, on, on you, the individual who's being approached by Nino, who says, I've, se- you know, I've separated. But if you don't take responsibility, you'll be in Wahala. No, like, but, like but what, what responsibility do you have? So, because he's told you his reality. Uh, this is gaga gaga. Ga, ga, these are my facts. So okay, so so in that what you the, the scenario you just painted as in like you can tell they're separated, the evidence mm. is everything. Mm. I, I get that. Okay, I think that's different. But when this particular one is saying they were driving different cars, so were they still living in the same house? Number one, and then two. For me, it was a comment of. I think I blame myself because I'm the one who told him to get a divorce. And I'm like, the moment I'm telling you to divorce your wife, that's a problem. I should never tell you to divorce your wife. I, I don't know if she told him to get divorced. I think what she said was, we can live together once that process has no, begun. No, she says it at the end. Did she? She says it at the end, yeah. Mm, she mm. says, she acknowledges and says, I think I blame she pushed myself. Him to it. I think I pushed him too. And then I'm saying this, and this is what I'm saying. While I get, she went through hell. I mean, this girl went through a lot, right? Um, and it's sad. But I'm also highlighting that I think we need to be careful not to ask somebody to get a divorce. I, sometimes it sounds so nice and good when, when things are happening between us. But I should never tell, you should never tell me to leave my man for you. Ha, nah, me, I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 you're like, <laughs> you must be joking. So you be like, leave. Listen, <laughs> you're separated. You've been sleeping in one bedroom for four years, in different bedroom for four years. Why does he think you've not been on it? dating sites because you've been dealing with the emotional turmoil of this, but now you feel okay to start looking elsewhere. Uh-huh. And I love everything about you. Mm-hmm. And you just want me to sit in the back <laughs> and chill and wait for whatever to happen. You must be joking. And do you know what? Mad? I think I think a lot of people just need that push. How many times and how many people do you know who've been sitting in a deadbeat job? Right? They need to push that. And they know they need to leave. They're too scared to make to, to, to make the move. Then they're told you've made you redundant. Yeah, and suddenly, boom, this person thrives and they actually get a job 10 times better than where they were all these years because they've had the experience and they're like, what was I thinking or what was I doing? I think we all need a little push somewhere. Hey. You know what? It just reminded me. Mm. I actually know someone mm. who is still married but has been separated for 20 years. Ah! Malo, uh, Th- this will kill my <laughs> No, 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 What's the reason why they're not divorced? Is it a financial thing? As in like they, they are rich, the business people, Honestly, and then they, they can't I, separate I, I, the I assets? I couldn't even or? tell you because I don't even know that she was still married. Yeah, but This came up and I've known this person for years. Mm. And it kind of just came up out of the blue that she was still married. Hey. And it kind of, you know, when you just, that's some when you've known man. someone for like 15, 16 years, and then they just come out with something like that. You're kind of just in shock. Like, what? That's some loyalty. You're still married. Uh, I mean, it, the moment you leave my house, right? You leave the house, the family home, and you go out and tell me about separation. I'm signing those papers. <laughs> <laughs> because you could live your life happily elsewhere. Mm. Or even as a single person. Yeah. But do you, do you know how expensive it is to get divorced these days? Yeah, but is it not like two year wait and then after two years? It's bananas. One of my cousins just recently got divorced. I think he dropped in total with the lawyer's fees and the back and forth. I think he dropped 12000 13000 Yeah, man. And then, of course, you know, we have to talk about, as a friend of mine, he's in America. He pays 8000 a month to his ex-wife. Hey. $8,000 a month? $8,000. <laughs> That's more than some people's salary. He earns too much money. He too much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell him to relax. Yo. So these, hey. these, are, things, these are things that you think about. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, saying it yeah, jokingly, yeah, yeah, but these are things yeah, that you think yeah, about when you're yeah, thinking about yeah. divorce. So it's not just, it's not just 
we're separated, let's get divorced, it's done. Yeah. yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. I think it's is that bit that I agree with that it's complicated. I think the issue has been like the whole what does separation mean? <laughs> and what are the, what are the rules of separation? If it's very clear that you're going apart and the, maybe it's just the financial side of things and it's very clear. And I think if it's very clear, people should be very clear and open about it. If you've got your person coming in, you go be like, you know, Malo, this is the situation. This is the evidence. Although in saying evidence, I think um, there's, there's one, maybe one of your Tinto's um, episodes way back where someone was given divorce papers as evidence, but they were fake. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> you can't really trust anything oh these days. <laughs> the evidence was fake. To most ah, it was fake, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, uh, you, you, t- 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 talking about the rules of, um, of, of separation, right? I, I decided to look it up just to get a sense of yeah. what this potentially might look like, right? Number one, separated spouses, whether residing under the same roof or not, should absolutely not, under any circumstances, engage in acts of sexual intimacy <laughs> with one another during their period of separation, specifically sexual intercourse. This is absolutely essential to preserving the period of separation as an act of sexual intercourse between separated parties will result in having to restart the clock if there's any uh-huh. mitigation process. Or steps towards wait, divorce. my guy. So, so, so that one, my guy, you're saying if you go to court, right? Mm. Say we've started the process, mm. and then for six months, we're strong head, we're strong head, right? Mm. Mm. And then whoppa, one whoppa. one day, ah. one one moment of weakness, <laughs> do it. Yeah. vodka, vodka, vodka. Ah. One moment of weakness. Ah. It means we're going back to square one. Back to, back to square one. <laughs> you're better off moving yeah, out of that. That was back to square one. <laughs> you live in the shed. I live in the shed. Right. Um, did you guys want me to teach you another one? Mm. Okay. If possible, one of the other rules of separation is if you are still in the same home, do not sleep in the same bedroom, if possible. So I guess people are telling you that okay, I'm not in the same bedroom. It's it's a step towards that. Next up, be sure to inform friends and family, co-workers, acquaintances, if applicable, of the separation and the intent to divorce. So that people are very clear about what is happening and there's no ambiguity. This, this yeah. is where it's at. Yeah. I think this way it's at because yeah. sometimes a guy tells you I'm separated because he wants to. Yeah. He wants to do something. Yeah. <laughs> but then if your friends don't know that you're separated or whatever. Yeah. You've already got something there. Or his family. I, 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 but these days, it's because friends, best friends will know. Best friends will come. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. separated just to help his mm-hmm. guy get some. Number three, stop wearing any wedding rings or any other wedding jewelry. It is demonstrates to the world that there is an intention to get back together and you're not actually separating to move towards divorce. Mm. Number four, refrain from engaging in joint couples activities such as you're being seen together at funerals. Oh my God. I know that one is a bit too much. Hey, it's, a, it's such ah. a fine. You know, do you know what? The, I think the fine line with that is is like, um, say you have children together, and and you've got like certain friends, we're mutual friends, and you do the mutual friend. What do you do? Does one can't sit out the funeral? I I don't know. No, I, 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 funeral I, I, is I hard. Think, so Wedding. so this is this is this is what I think. Mm. I think it's attending the funeral together. I think you can be at the same funeral. You're not sitting. But one's on that side, the other's on the other side. Mm. They're not together. Hey, mm. that's, that's my take on it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's I true, guess, though. I Even guess. like weddings or whatever, one is at that corner, one is at that corner. Because now you hear stories like, no, 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 I just had to. I didn't have a choice. And then suddenly the pictures are, you're together. Exactly. So sit there. You... Don't wear matching colors. <laughs> Don't wear matching colors. <laughs> Don't wear matching colors. Now you're, now you're both at the funeral wearing ah. black. <laughs> Find out what color they're wearing. <laughs> they're both in black at the funeral, bro. Ah, bro. You better be in white at the funeral. Ah. <laughs> but one of the saddest things for me that came out of this was after she had found out that this guy has got, I think it was, we got to like baby number seven, 
seven kids. Yeah, yeah, number seven or something like that. Yes. And then she goes, I sat down and had a conversation with myself. Yeah. I thought deep, long and hard. Yeah. In my head, I was expecting to hear, I've decided to put myself first and I'm going to yeah. leave. Yeah. Yeah. And then she flipped the script <laughs> and says, I'm ready to become wife number two. Yeah. And to become a sister That's wife. crazy, bro. Yeah. Like. That's some juju right there, bro. Like how <laughs> low can you go? It, it, it's it's, it's yes. easy to perceive it as, as wild, but. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, there, there must be something very real and relatable to that. Yeah. Because. Let's be honest. How many people do we know who are um, wives number twos, but unofficially? Yeah. I, I could count ten for you. Yeah, like this. No, but I think I think the difference in this situation is she she thought that she was number one. She thought that she was one. She was the, she was the one and only, isn't it? In that situation. Yeah, yeah, and so obviously you know. But this is where the red flags come in because there had been instances in the past. Mm. Where, you know, there was that inadvertent, you know, um, butt dial yeah. where she now realizes that, you know, this guy has another child. And yet he didn't, he didn't and, mention and the, that. It's like an omission he, or something he, he omitted. Her. Yeah. And then there's a sus- suspicion that, you know, is he sleeping with this other woman? Yeah. You know, yeah. and then there's a Jamaican lady yeah. and there's... Oh. So at some point, something so, yeah. must hit and go... Something has to give at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Something has to give. Yeah, but you know, I suppose in in all of this, she so the timeline is the difficult part, isn't it? Yeah. Because how long were they together? together. Yeah. And how from long the was the beginning she, yeah. to the end? Because what was the emotional yeah tie between the two yeah. of them? Yeah. We don't know yeah. exactly how long. Yeah. I know the longer you're with someone, the harder it is to walk away from that situation. And and, and then now she's had the child. She's had so the child. So before, right before the child, she's already had pressure. Now she's got the child to maintain her marriage, which is the next pressure she's facing now. It's back. It's still on the what will people say syndrome. And I still think while she's trying to maintain that, she's still trying to belong. Genuinely, she's a female who wants to be in love, who wants to have a family, wants to raise her kids nicely, wants to have one husband. And to then have loving, happiness. Happiness. And I think that's what she was going for. And the main thing for her was, I just want to belong. I just want him to choose me, choose me, just choose me. And so in her way, in her mind, she's sort of saying, okay, fine. If he's not a hundred percent choosing me, at least let him, I, I don't know, send me sort of like, you know, let, let him, let me be number two or, or I'll be number one and the other one is number two or whatever. But it was almost like she's settling. She's settling because she's just mm. trying to, be, but I think the sense of belonging for a woman is a, big major deal is it belonging or is it security it's it, i think they go hand in hand mm. Se- security is one thing but you know belonging or feeling like i'm wanted mm. feeling wanted is a big deal like if if any guy comes to me right now and says mm. you i want you you i want to i'll give you the security i will secure you i want you the moment i feel like i belong i'm not moving i'm in so for her, I think maybe she wanted that so, so bad. Now there's a child. Where's she going to go with the child? You know what? This is why the feeling station needs to have a female perspective. Well, I, because I, what mm. you've just said is so insightful. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. I'm a big believer in polygamy, by the way. <laughs> just, 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 you my just guy. had to. How do we? Yeah. You how just do we, had to. How did, how, did, how, did we, how did we go from that was insightful uh, to I'm a the, believer in yeah. polygamy? Yeah, <laughs> polygamy. Only, 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 only because I, you, only because you, you know you mentioned the sense of 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 belonging there. Mm. That is very true uh, and a very good thing, right? Because. When, when when you talk about the population of the world in general, there are way more women than there are men, mm. which means you will always have somebody uh, feminine who does not have someone that they are connected to because of the imbalance. Mm. But I, I think I think I think I think it's 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 either sixty two or sixty three percent of is, the world is, uh, is, are women is feminine. Yeah. Oh, you see. So if that is the case, we will always be outnumbered as men. But this is where I think Islam got it right. 
way, 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 way back in the day. If somebody lost a husband, right? And mm-hmm. she happens to have kids and he had the capacity to take care of her and the kids as if they were his own, they permitted it to happen. Mm-hmm. And they lived happily ever after because culturally you're being accepted. Otherwise you wouldn't be accepted anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was on holiday, I was in in a predominantly Muslim um, country and they said they can have up to four wives. Mm. And it makes sense. And I remember speaking to one of the tour guides um, and I asked him whether he has more than one and he says, I don't. Then I'm like, why not when you have the opportunity to do it? He says, because I can't take care of more than one and their family, mm. which was a responsible thing. Mm. I'm mm. like, so is this a cultural thing? It's like, yeah, it's acceptable. Mm. because." And he said the same thing. There are more women in the world and children than they are just men mm. who have capacity to do it. So off the back of that, polygamy allows you to have a sense of belonging, it, which, it which is what you're describing. It, it does. It, it does. gives you a sense of security right. if the man is responsible enough to say, I can't have more than one. I don't have the capacity, so let me leave it alone. Not just because he wants to to have more things to deal with. He even said, hey, do you know what? My f- only woman now gives me so much headache and trouble. <laughs> Adding another one will just make it even worse. And the fact that mm. I don't have the money to back it up is just problem after problem after problem. Yeah, yeah. So off the yeah. back of that, I get it. Yeah. The risk yeah. being in this episode with Father Abraham, I don't think that he would have had the capacity to take care of her and... Her son. Wait, he lied. See, the, the 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 difference would have been that in polygamy, you people are honest at the beginning. Yeah. Well, the when the right way of doing it, you are honest to your first wife, and and in our culture where I come from, your wife helps you get the next one. So there's already a family sense, and this is where again, everybody wants to belong. So by the time the wife is going together, she feels she's part of something. She understands the culture. You've agreed the rule, what the rules are. Everybody comes and got, they've got their own place to live, whatever. You already know, okay, it's, it's three of us. This is a safety place for all of us. You're making sure family, families are taken care of. Health-wise, everybody's safe. Where is here uh, Father Abraham? He it was hiding. It, wasn't, it was not polygamous. It he was, was not. He was, yeah, 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 yeah. He was not. He was not. He was just, he was just a cheat. <laughs> this Cyril, what do you call him? Chill Chita. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one of the things that's a bit hurtful, I think, is being deceptive to the woman about your um, situation as far as the child goes. Yeah. A child is such a big thing. You know, Nino, we already know how, you guys already know how we feel about, about, about yeah. children, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Sh- at, at what point should a man or woman declare that they have a child? Day one. Day one. Day one. Yeah, one. What point do you declare that you like when if I go out on a date and I'm like, so how are you? What do you say? You're fine. Mm. Right? Okay, okay. Uh so what do you do for work? Mm. Do you declare it then or you, you hide it? Uh, I never say nothing about my uh, but work. no, but you're here we're sharing, we're talking about interest. Like genuinely, we're talking about what do you do for work? What do you like to do for fun? What's 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 what, what's the one thing you're passionate about, Hinto? On the first date, if I ask you a question. Would you tell me what you're passionate about? Or would you like, ah, no, I'd rather keep that private. Uh, actually, we, do you know what? Uh, I think there have been situations where people have been on dates and the question has been asked, you know, do you have kids? How many kids do you have? Uh, so when you start saying, I've got one kid when you've got seven. It's a problem. That's a problem. Oh, you say you've got zero when you have one. I think that's yeah. even a bigger that's a, problem. That's a major problem. But at the same time, why not just say, I, do you know what, uh, I'm most of my weekends. On dates, you talk about a lot of things. And on dates, you have the opportunity to bring up your kids. <laughs> you have the opportunity. You guys love your kid right now. You tell me you would hide. Never. You wouldn't. Never. The, the way the both not. of you just go, if you, if you, if you, it'll if you, come out. If you, if you, if you accept not. me, yeah. you have to accept my kids. So that's, what I'm saying for, that's what I'm saying. From day one, the likelihood is in your conversation, without you even noticing it, you're going to drop a comment that allows them to recognize that there's somebody else in your life. Yeah. It's important. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. I don't, I don't even have to ask you to say, do you have kids? That's You're going to be like, oh, the other day I went, I took my son for football. Oh. Exactly. And then suddenly I'm like, wow. oh, oh how, many, how many kids do you have? That's true. But this one, Abraham, Father Abraham is like, nah, fam. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's like, it's like, you know, it's like girls and body count. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Damn. 
son. No, 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 you're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm joking, ladies. Ladies, we got this one tight. Don't worry. Yo, I got you. Tinto. I got you, ladies. Tinto. I got you. The next episode. <laughs> yeah. What's your body count? <laughs> Mine is always two. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> we don't play with that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like with kids, you, you're always going to say some, something that you're passionate about, something that means something to yeah, you. You, you always slip it. up if you're trying to. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're so for right. him to go to the length of hiding it, <laughs> it's a problem. He knew. He, he knew it was going to be a problem from the beginning. Mm. Plus, he has a with, brother from with, church, isn't it? With, with different baby mamas yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yes. How can I ask you both? How dangerous are exes? Very. On a scale of one to ten. Mm, I think it depends on how things ended. <laughs> And the reason why I ask, Kimalo, before you give me your number, is the dude paid Lobola, say, in January. Yeah. First week of January. Yeah. First week of February. He, he was out. He says, I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I the had ancestors have been talking to me. And I'm going back to my baby mama. And he was gone. He was gone the following day. The, he was gone the following day. He had a hotel checked in for him, for him to live in temporarily whilst he was making the transition. And then the pattern became three days with baby mama and two days with her. So how dangerous is an ex? Because I know people who don't fuck with their exes. Nah. Like, like they don't even bat an eyelid. Bro, you're an ex for a reason. Mm. <laughs> Why? Why is Ben Tuck? You're an ex. The, 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 difference, <laughs> the difference is when you have kids with your ex, that's mm. a whole different discussion. But if you don't have kids with your ex, what are you doing with them? If you wanted to be married, then why not? Why not? You may as well marry them. Why are they not here in your life right now? Listen, there's 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 exes right now uh-huh. that have uh, some unfinished business. <laughs> you ah, see, that Nino. is what we're talking about. <laughs> Nino, Nino, Nino. <laughs> Nino. <laughs> That's, this is now what listen, we mean. Listen, 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 listen. Mm. It all depends on how things ended, <laughs> right? Because I think for me, the ultimate betrayal. Is if you hook up with somebody else. If you do that, like me and you, we're done. Like I'll, there's no coming back from that. But any other circumstances, like maybe we're just not getting on anymore, then we break up. Eh, there's always room to get back. Together. Yeah, but <laughs> hey, you know, you know, brothers, you know that that game River Bank, River Bank, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you could jump, jump, yeah. jump. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you play like a dangerous <laughs> game. <laughs> hey, you, do you have exes where when they go high and they say, do you remember that day when we did this? Yo. That's sad. Uh, uh, you see your reaction? Yo. That's exactly what I'm saying. For me, an ex is an ex. Once you become an ex, you're deleted, you're blocked. Goodbye. It's been nice knowing you. Because I want peace. It's a simple one. I don't know why it should be complicated. If I Imagine if I keep all my exes. Then, then the new guy, you've got about 10 guys to deal with. Okay, no, 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 two guys, by the way. I said two, isn't it? <laughs> two, two, two. You gotta stick uh, to that number. That I gotta change that number, stay. yeah. So, so you got all of these exes to deal with. And then you've got these random text messages mm. that come up from your exes. Mm. You, there's Marla being a good, good girl, as always. Mm-hmm. A text comes up, goes, oh, wow, you know, I, I, can't, I still can't believe we did A, B, C, D. Mm-hmm. Then me, I haven't told, I haven't told my nigga that, hey, you know, I once went to Thailand. In <laughs> 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 uh, the next the thing, yeah. Or you get a picture that pops up, but it's an old picture. Mm. But it doesn't look old anymore. It's just the moment nigga opens Yo, it, it's, 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 it's not no, old. It's, it's, it's not old, old anymore. It's, she's, she's talking like she's got experience <laughs> with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer one. Don't answer two. Don't answer three. Don't answer four. Don't answer five. I used to have don't answers. Bad <laughs> nah, fam. You're gone. You're gone. <laughs> but 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 I'm 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 of that school of of yours, Marlo, which I think it was an important question for me to ask. Mm. An ex is an ex. Yeah. All, all of my past relationships, the current has mm. never had to worry about an ex. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Never, never, never. Because once once it's done, 
It's not a case of saying, hey, you know, fuck you. Hey, you ain't your... Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Block, block. No. But the purpose that they served is no longer there. Mm. So, so, so I keep them in that space. If they were your confidant, you know, that person who you rely on for sound word support and advice, and they're not that person, what, what are you keeping them for? Every, everyone I serves... Everyone serves the purpose of a okay. game. Yeah, if, it, if it was dish, the camera. <laughs> if it was dish, dish, you know. If there's going to be yeah. storms ahead, my brother. Yeah. For an each, each. Hmm? Yeah, you keep them, you keep them in for an each, each. <laughs> and then maybe that's what they were good for, and, and that's what they were really there for, because then that purpose is still being served. This is where the, now that then it's a problem because mm. you got your one here where mm. you're trying to make this thing work. And then you still have got that one. So this this girl, when she wakes up and he says, I had a dream. There's no dream. This ah, nigga, nigga had, had no, no dream. dream. Nah. Within a month, you dream your kulu, your, your, your grandpa telling you to go back. And then in the, within that same month, and then he's shouting at her, making it seem like she's the one going mad. And then you don't want me to see my children, which is not true. She didn't say anything about the children. She was saying about the ex. Mm. Then he turned around, made, made it sound like it was about the kids. And then suddenly he's gone the following day. At what point did you talk to your ex to say I'm coming back? At what point did she forgive you? Hey. This is what I'm saying. The timeline of this whole situation doesn't make sense. Wow. You can't Marlo, just yes. you can't just wake up and like after you're forgiven, come. Yo, what? You've what? been living with another woman and you went to pay, and then suddenly tomorrow you're back in my house. What? So he'd been talking to his ex. He's been by the time he went to pay the bride price, this nigga has already been talking to that one and claiming. This woman is forcing me. She's horrible. What are so by the time he says I'm out, the dream was a build-up story for me. A build-up story. You build up a you make a story, you build it up. Have you never done that before? Oh, you're about to break up with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, it's you me. Know, hey, hey, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been thinking about it, you were like, my build-up story is going to be this is my this is how I'm gonna attack this thing. Mm. And then he attacks it. And then he starts, he goes into a fight with her and makes her feel like she's a problem. Because you don't, you don't want me to see my kids. She never said anything about the kids. She was saying, your ex. And he goes, you don't want me to see my kids. Why make her feel that way? You Damn. know, j- j- just to, um, as we prepare to close this out, one of the things that you've literally just mentioned now, Malo, is he said that you said this. Or blah 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 blah, and started painting her to be the bad person. Mm. But right at the beginning, he painted his ex-wife as that bad mm. person. Exactly. One of the things mm. I've always had a problem with mm. is someone who's too quick mm. to bad mouth the ex, and mm. they tell you everything, mm. and they are filled with the hate. And mm. for me, that is actually a red flag. That is a one. massive red flag. So my mm. question to you both. Should you really say how you felt about your ex to someone potentially new? Like I the think, real raw, deep feelings and everything. I, th- I think you can give an account of what's happened. Um, but you also should do a lot of introspection. You need to self-reflect. Because in every relationship, in every breakup... It's not just the other person that's done something. You may have done something yourself. It might have been something minor, but you need to reflect on that yourself. Mm. So even when you have a new partner, when you are sort of accounting for things that have happened in your previous relationship or relationships, Mm. I think there needs to be an element of, this is what I have learned about myself. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And this shows a level of growth Mm. and maturity. Mm. Absolutely, I agree. I think I think that's true. I think for me, it's it's. Uh, I agree with that. I, I I wouldn't necessarily want the guy to completely tell me everything. I want to. Um, I think I want a level of information. However, knowing my own heart is that there are things that I can't take. So whether it happened a while back and no longer together, it's okay. But imagine being told of the happiest moments you had together. And then how mm. I used to love buying her flowers, whatever. Every mm-hmm. time now you're buying me flowers, I'm thinking, oh, my days. Mm. So I just think for the sake of moving away from those little things, I just I just want to know that you were kind. Just say, you know what, we, we were fine. We were kind. Yeah. I did my best for her. Um, yeah. And then like you, like you just said, also it's really great hearing somebody and saying, actually, I, looked, I look at this and think this is where I went wrong in this relationship. It, it shows a lot of growth. 
So I think I'm okay with that. I don't want detail of, hey, I once took this place. She loved it. And in my head, I'm thinking, ha, you only spend 50 pounds on me. <laughs> yeah, 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 then you're yeah. spending 300 pounds on her. It's not like I'm about money, but it's those little things that come into your head. For me as a female, it's those little things that can come in and cause noise when it shouldn't. So a clarity is good and honesty is good. And then you just say, it's done, deal. It's done. We're out. We'll, let's move on. Amen, Marlo. I like that a lot. What, 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 where do you stand with that, Tinto? Uh, for me, if anybody's coming guns blazing, saying that my ex did this, he was full of poo and he was a whole heap of these, 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 these massive red flag. Um, mm. I'm likely going to leave. Because if I do one small thing, I'm going to be that guy also. I'm going to be that same villain being given the same number of issues. Mm. If you are mature enough to know that things went south, but you only need to describe it in in a, in, in a few words. Mm. That's a level of maturity that's attractive for me. If if let's say um, my ex had cheated with seven different people, and I'm talking to you, Marlo, mm. as 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 my new girlfriend, mm. from day one I'd say, hey, things didn't work out between the two of us. We had different values in terms of mm. what you need to do and say with people of the opposite sex, mm. and I leave it there. I think it's okay to say, yeah, they cheated, but then you're not going in. It, in detail yeah, because yeah, it, it, cause it's, it's something that you're going to have to work through at some yeah. point but you're not I don't like, think there's that level of ratchetness that's, that, that's required yeah yeah because once that comes in uh, I think you're in trouble I, th- I think the problem is sometimes you know people are still hurting mm. if they've been cheated on mm. and they're all but glad to share the details of what's happened yeah, 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 yeah. because they're still hurting mm-hmm. so you can't you can't blame a person that's hurting you know or bad mouthing uh, someone. That's the reason to leave them alone. Mm. If they're still hurting that deep, and the and, you, and you guys are talking, they're, they're not they're not ready to go uh, into another relationship. Ready. It's true. That's true. I think they're not ready. They just they're just gonna plaster me with a whole heap of shit. Now I know all this stuff, and if she's very attractive, like Fifty says. <laughs> stay over there. <laughs> stay over there. I don't know, I don't know if you guys had um had any other bits and pieces you wanted to touch on. Well, my closing statement. Yeah. Communication is very important in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Respect is very important mm-hmm. in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Compassion and compromise are very important yeah. in a relationship. Amen to that, Nino. And I'm out. Mic drop. Marlo, anything I'm else? Not. Nah, I mean, I just really feel for um, Chipo. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. people go through and make decisions. And I think what I love the most is in hindsight, when she's looking at it now, she's saying, you know what? I could have done better. Yeah. I could have. Because sometimes you can't help it. When you're going through it, I mean, I've been in crazy places. So mm. when you're going through it, it's difficult. But I think kudos to her that she's kind of in a space now where she goes, actually, this is what I'll I want now. Mm, mm. And then hoping that she never has to work through that journey again. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really proud of her for stepping out yeah, and yeah. actually choosing herself first. Yeah. Well, thanks guys. Um, and until you feel us out there, thank you so much. If you've made it this far into the episode, we hope that you will actually enjoy all of the other midweek drops that we're going to have with Nino and Marlo. Um, and you guys have been listening to another episode of the feeling station. I'm your host Tinto. Nino Brown. And Marlo. Catch you next weekend's episode. Peace. It's the midweek drop. Yeah.